All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Kakadash. The bond of the apostles and elders, the great millstone, and peace and salutation to the Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered across the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth out in faith and in sincerity. I'm the brother Shemala. All right, and this lesson is going to be entitled The Most High Will Hear Our Cry and Deliver Us. You see, because Back then, when you go through the scriptures uh, in, in ancient Egypt, because we are in spiritual Egypt today, right, pursuant to Revelation, the 11th chapter, we cried unto the Most High because of the, the hardcore slavery that the Egyptians was putting upon us, right? You can go through the story of Moses, right, when we had to, uh, I mean, through the stories uh the chapters of Exodus, right? When Moses went before Pharaoh, right? And we, the Pharaoh increased the hell upon us, right? In our captivity, he increased the hell because Moses went before him and told him that the Most High told him to let us go. So Pharaoh made it harder upon us. And Israel was sighing and crying. And what happened? The, the, the Most High, he heard us. Right? And this is going to lead me right here to Exodus, the second chapter. Exodus 2. And. Well, I'm sorry. Um, right? Because let me see something right quick. Right, this this part right here when they were signing the crime was when um was when Pharaoh well after after Joseph died and Pharaoh the the, the next Pharaoh uh rose up and he didn't really have respect until the children of Israel. You see, after Joseph died because Joseph was in rulership, so after Joseph died then they looked at Israel as if of a potential enemy or something because we it said that we we would we was great right we wasn't like them you see and they didn't want us to one day you know pick sides with the enemy and come against Egypt right so that's when um that's when Pharaoh he ordered the the slaughter of the male children and um but Moses, Moses survives, right? Because he was hid, and you know. So after that, they put Israel in 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 bondage because when Joseph when Joseph was around, Israel wasn't in no damn bondage, right? But the the next Pharaoh that came, he he put us in bond. He put us in slavery, right? And later on down the line, that slavery got more intense. You see. When Moses went before Pharaoh, like I said earlier, you know, I just wanted to clarify that. Exodus 2 and 23, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto the Most High by reason of the bondage. She said, They cried unto the Most High, and said, It came up to the Most High. So the Most High heard, which his name is Yahweh. And the most I heard their groaning, and the most I remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If the most I looked upon the children of Israel, and the most I had respect unto them. You see, so he said that he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because of our cry. Right? The promises that he made. And it's, and it's, and, it's, uh, and, and then again, too, the word respect means to look back. Right, look back upon what? <laughs> the acts of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right, this is the seed of these men. And I made these promises unto them. He looked back unto that promise. Right, and he now, hey, he, he got to fulfill that. See, so now you can go to uh, Exodus 3 
At seven, and Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So the most I knew our sorrow, just like now he do. He know the things that we're going through. He know how wicked the society is. Right? We don't have to tell him. It ain't nothing unknown to the most. He knows. He see the hell that's getting put upon us, man. It says, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and they large unto a land unto a land flowing with milk and honey, which is the land of Israel, which is known as the land of Canaan at first, because the who dwelt in there. It said, Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So he's like, man, look, I, I'm, I'm hearing my people crying. I'm seeing what's going on. Like, I'm finna send you to go to Pharaoh so you can let them go. Hey, it's time. My people finna come up out of there and I'm finna take them into a, a, a better land for them. You see, because the children of Israel was crying unto him. So when you go to Exodus 12, right, dealing with after the Passover, after we kept that first Passover, and what happened, right? The Mosai that slayed all the firstborn, right? So Exodus 12 and 30, he slayed all the firstborn of the, of the, of the Egyptians, right, in that land. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the church of Israel. Go and serve Yahweh as he has said. So the Most High made him submit and give in to let us go by bringing it. Because the Most High brought various plagues, 10 plagues, right, upon Egypt, right? And the most intense plague was the, was the death of the firstborn, right? Because their flesh actually got touched. <laughs> you see, the Most High actually started destroying people. You see, he said, Oh, now nah, y'all got to go. Also take your flocks and your herds as he has said and be gone and bless me also. You see, so Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted to get blessed. The most I magnified himself, right? And Pharaoh hey, he knew that. Okay, look, this is this is the power. This is a hey, they power is the real deal. You see, Yahweh ain't playing. You see, and the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might have sent them out of the land in haste, for they said, we be all dead, man. So, like, like, look, we don't get these people out here. We all going to die. And the people took their dope before it was leavened, their netting troughs, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. It says, and, and Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. So we took their things, but we took their, their gold, their, their precious things, right? We spoiled them. Like when you go to when you go to war with a different nation and you you, you take the spoils of war, their treasures and things of that nation, we took all of that. You see? We took all of that. So we we left out of Israel, I mean out of out of Egypt in style. Right? With they shit on. <laughs> And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children, right? So, yeah, so we left up out of there, bro. And we all know the story what happened. Pharaoh came and chased us, and he ultimately got destroyed, you see? But we got delivered up out of Egypt because we cried unto the Most High. The Most High heard us, and he remembered that covenant. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 4. In 31, it says, For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, which is just a woman giving birth, right? She's she's crying, she's yelling, she's screaming, she's in pain. The voice of the daughter of Zion, which the daughter of Zion represents Israel, right? So he likened the Israel to a, a, a calmly and delicate woman. Jeremiah uh, 4 and 2, right? I believe the same chapter. Four and um, six and two. I mean, Jeremiah six and two. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a commonly and delicate woman. So Israel is that woman. That's the daughter of Zion. I'm talking about the whole nation. For I've heard a voice 
as of a woman of travail, and the anguish as of, a, of her that bring her forth to her first child. The voice of the daughter of Zion that bewildered herself, that spread it to her hands, saying, Woe is me now, or bewildered meaning cry. For my soul is weird because of murderous soul. The whole nation of Israel is crying right now in the spirit, even though they don't know the truth. Like the ones in the truth and the ones outside of the truth, we are all crying out to the Most High for this, for hard bondage again, for this oppression. You see, he says, "For what was me now? For my soul is weary because of murderers. Who was ultimate? Who was the ultimate murderer of the planet Earth? Esau, Edom, so-called white man, right?" Bro, this man has to be put down. It says, "No flesh shall be saved." This man is messing up everything. The whole, the the, the way that the Most High tend things to be. This man has flipped it. You see, and ultimately he didn't murder. He didn't murder the children of Israel. He didn't. He didn't shed blood of the children of Israel, the tribes, right? And 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 it's constantly shedding blood. It constantly murdering our people. You see, so we crying out, and even though the, even though the two thirds right, they gonna be destroyed. The Most High still are hearing their cries, the cries of His people, right? But He's really paying attention to His elect. Because what the Scriptures say that the Most High is going to come avenge the elect, right? Even though Esau gonna have to pay an entirety for what He's doing unto us, unto our whole nation. Right, but the, the two thirds still gonna have to perish to come back on the other side. But Esau still gonna have to pay for what he did unto them. You see, because we 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 are the apple of the Most High's eye, right? Even even though we are in a low condition, even though we went off against the Most High, right? And even though the two thirds gonna get destroyed by you touching the Israelite, that's your ass. <laughs> you see, that's like you being mad at your son, you disciplining your son. Right, and someone basically comes and and disrespects your son, slap him upside the head, do this and that, right? Beat him up, jump him. You ain't even even though you mad at your son, you you ain't gonna go help him, right? You see, you you're not gonna try to. Pay those, pay those dudes back. That's 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 that that and did this to your son. Yeah, you gonna do that. Ezekiel nine and four, and how was said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, right? Which Jerusalem is the people for is a place, right? Still so talking about the Israelites, try the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and so they mark, which is Dawa in the Hebrew, is a sign, which is a uh, exemption from judgment from the forthcoming, from the upcoming judgment that's coming, right? Uh, the destruction of America Upon the foreheads of all of, of the men that sigh and that cry For all the abominations that be done in the midst of us So we are sighing and crying The men of the Lord Right For all the abominations that be done in the midst of us uh, uh, Esau Is setting up all these abominations The inhabitants It says that the earth is the fall under the inhabitants They're rough Right Because they ain't, they ain't keeping the laws The laws of the Most High Is slack Like the scriptures say The law is not upheld in this society so there's nothing but wickedness and we got to live within this shit we got to be righteous amongst this wicked nation amongst these wicked people and it's vexing just like when lot was in sodom and gomorrah right he was vexed each and every day from from what he was seeing and what he was hearing and bro hey i've 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 i've, I've been that way but it's getting it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's like man god damn we gotta get the fuck up out of here man Right, so we sign and crying. We crying to the most. I like, please, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, right? Deliver us now, right? How was shot now? Deliver us, right? How was shot now? Atta, you see, deliver us now, right? But this is uh, Isaiah nineteen and 19 says in that day there shall be an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border of the roof to Yahweh right you got all these different camps scattered around America right when you go to Revelation 11 and 8 it says and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is Babylon the great America right dead bodies being spiritually dead not having this truth 
Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where us our Lord is crucified. So this place is spiritually Egypt. Right? Verse 20, 19 and 20. Isaiah 19 and 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh folks in the land of Israel. I mean the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior and a great one. And he shall deliver them. So we're going to cry out. Most are going to hear our cries. Right? And he's going to send a savior, which is Yahweh Shai. Right? And he's going to deliver us. Just like just like back then. And in ancient Egypt. You see, the most I set up Moses to go into Pharaoh. Right? Hey, let my people go. And then we had a chariot following us. Right? An angel. And who was that angel? Right? That was Yahweh Shai. You see, that was that was the son of the most high. Right, he was always there, right? And he's gonna send him back to deliver us from the second Egypt. Like Isaiah 11 says that he's gonna deliver the, the remnant of his people a second time. That never happened in history. So, what's that talking about? That's talking about over here and from wherever we scattered it. It's Revelation 11 and 11. As three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So the, this this truth, that breath, that Holy Spirit came in unto us, right? And we stood upon our feet, right? We are alive. We ain't dead no more. We were quickened through this word. And it said great fear fell upon them which saw them, which is our enemies, right? Esau, Edom, and these different nations. Because we didn't woke up. We didn't arose from the dead, right? Just like Yahweh Shai rose from the dead, we rose from the dead in the spirit, it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And they sent them up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. All right. So we got delivered up into a chariot and our enemies saw us being delivered. Just like the Egyptians back then. They seen those plagues. They seen the things that were going on right for us. And we, and we, and we left up out of there and the chariots, the chariot followed us and protected us and the Egyptians seen that they they witnessed all of that, right? And but hey, this 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 coming deliverance, everybody gonna see it. They say just like the, the neighbors of Zion seeing your captivity, they shall see your salvation. You see, but yeah, man, that's that that was the lesson, bro. This just this like how we cried back then, and we crying now. The Most High gonna hear it, and he gonna remember that promise, and he gonna come and get us. So with that, I wanna say shalom.